Like I recently put my 71 Chevelle that was converted to a drag car in the early 80s up on the dyno and a lot of you were blown away with the results. But what a guy really needs is a seat of the pants test and a paper slip. That's right. We're gonna load the Chevelle up on the ramp truck, go to the local track and make some hits. But first, this thing's gotta pass tech. And I also identified a few issues that gotta be addressed first. Let's dig in. Now I'll be sure you guys stick around till after we run this rig at the track. I was actually able to get in touch with the original owner and the feller that built this car and we've had some really great conversations and I have the full history on this rig. Everything from bumper to bumper and I want to fill you guys in. But right now we need to focus on just getting this ready and to the track. Just decided this morning over coffee to go to this test and tune. Track is hot at noon and we've got a big drive to get there. So we ran this on the dyno and it was a lot lower than a lot of you thought it should be. Yeah, maybe a small block Chevrolet is kind of typical. The biggest issue was it looked like or sounded like it was going through the converter or power wasn't being transferred to the wheels. I noticed that as well. We were also down a little bit on power. Now power wise, that night I came back out, fired it back up. It's a great time to test for lightning leaks. Sure enough, found one. Check this out. Now, as far as the torque converter goes, I know what's in here. It shouldn't be stalling that high. It could either be the converter or the transmission slipping or a combination of both of them. But being I drove this thing hundreds and hundreds of miles and hours and hours and hours on end, I'm confident it's not slipping. I think it's just that converter. Well, we got to get that on the track, really spin that sluice box up, see what happens there. Then we can make some adjustments or figure out what to do. The biggest concerns today, we got to fix that lightning leak. We got to swap the seat and we got to update the belts so this thing will pass tech. I think everything else is here. We got a rad overflow, the battery's tied down. We got all the lug nuts, you know, basic stuff. We're not gonna be running in any fast classes, so tech is pretty, you know, slim. I'm gonna just push this car forward so we can get the door open. Let's start on the inside, the hard stuff first. This tire keeps going flat. The wind won't stay in her. Should address it someday. Nope, probably not. So the very first thing a guy needs to address is the seat in here. I can't safely fit. I got a funny story about the uh, original owner's height. I'll tell you a little later. But this is way too high. My head's in the headliner. Helmet's above the bar. Big no-no. Seat's gotta come down a ways. And I also gotta get one, you know, for some Shakira hips. I ain't a slender feller. Let's say that. These belts gotta come out. We gotta update those too. Remember, I found the SFI tag on here. Here it is right here. 1988 of August, it expired. Wow, okay. 9 sixteenths, looks like. Oh, this one didn't even have a nut on it. <laughs> That's fine, you don't need belts. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, seat is out. You know, overall, the floor is in decent shape. She's had some rearranging. We'll put it that way. There's some tin. I don't know if it was to fix rust or partially for the cage because we got some patching up here as well. But the seat's been moved a couple 15 times. Actually, that looks like just once, probably forward. And uh, that's why we have all these holes. I'm hoping my new seat has the same spread and we can use the existing holes, it's just gonna be a lot lower. We're gonna leave that seat and belts and everything alone. We'll eventually, you know, doll that up or make it match, but we're just trying to get to the track today and get some hits in, so we're not gonna worry about that. 
I might could run the vacuum through here really quick just so I don't have wood chips blowing up my nose. You know what I mean? That'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Can a guy reach the other side? Maybe. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Wood chips and zip ties. Sounds like what I would name my band if I had one. Zip ties and the wood chips. <laughs> Woody and the zip ties. Okay. That's early. What do you want from me? Well, here's the old seat. Guy would think I'd go with something nice, comfortable for a new seat. Nope. We're keeping her old school. Slightly different style because I'm a lot taller. I need my belts up here. We're gonna have to change the cage eventually in the car. So I'm just kind of planning for that. I don't want to buy seats twice. Unfortunately, the mounting pads do not line up. So we're gonna be drilling another 58 holes in the floor. Maybe we can line three of them up, but the other side, not so gooder. But that's what we're gonna do. I think I might have bought pads for these, though. I'd have to check, I can't remember at this point. But let's get this in and bolt it up quick. All I'm gonna do is try to line up as many of these existing bolt holes as I can, probably to the bar side. And then we'll have to figure out how to mark the other side, scribe them up, drill some holes. I'm gonna be running new grade eight hardware instead of that stuff that was in there with some nice big washers and serrated nuts just so it's a little bit safer. I love it when something you don't plan for comes together like a plan. <laughs> Write that down. See how high that seat is and forward? And then look at this one. It's exactly what a guy needed to get my melon under control in here. And then also we got a little bit more backwards-ish. It's a little bit thinner of a seat, a little bit different of a style. It doesn't have such a cup. Those are more like Baja sand buggy kind of seats. So we're gonna have to drill a lot of holes. It looks like under here, I can maybe use just one, but I can use that as a reference point. If I could slide a bolt in there and we'll start mocking everything else up. I might jump in and just see it actually sits a little better there. I want it centered on the wheel. Let me play with this a little bit. Really tight clearance in there. Couldn't even get a scribe up in there. So what I did was just, you know, got some tss, tss, and I went ahead and tss, 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 tss. it's gonna be close. I'm gonna end up loosening the brackets, dropping the bolts through first, and then we'll drop the bolts through the floor and nut them from the bottom basically. But I'm hoping that this is gonna leave us some indication where we need to drill those holes. That actually worked a lot better than I thought. Hole there, there, where's the other one? There, here, we're using that one, and there. Piece of cake. Looks a little crooked-ish compared to the old one though. But the seam is what's messing that up. Well, she's now got more holes than Independence or the Titanic. We'll come back and have to fix this up after we redo the bar at some point. We'll have to just put another skin in here and try to keep this a little bit more weather tight. Not that this is gonna see weather, but we just don't want this to start rusting and turn into, you know, big old floor cancer. See, instead of trying to fight under the car and hold this up and try to squeeze nuts in here and deal with that, and then you have to get a precise bolt so it doesn't go into the seat. I loosen the bracket and we'll run the bolts in like that snug this back up and then we just got to line these up at the floor and put nuts on from the bottom and it should make the job a lot easier. All six bolts slid right down into place. I think I'm going to use these big heavy duty washers but I'm going to go get some flat serrated nuts with like a flange on them so they bite these good. Crawl underneath, tighten them up, seat's done. This is what I'm talking about here. These are grade eight flange lock nuts. So they should grab those washers pretty good. 
So in setting up belts, make sure you follow the manufacturer's directions specifically. And, uh, you know, sometimes I tease about safety and whatnot. I'm not that very good at wearing PPE, but man, I tell you what, with belts, if you don't wear them right, they're actually more dangerous than good. That's one of the other reasons we had to change the seat is the belt orientation over the shoulder was incorrect. There's a sweet zone here. Actually, it's on this one. See right here? It's excessive either direction. We were pulling way down too far to come up over my shoulders. It's bad for your spine. So, and then also how you wrap them if you're doing it over the bar or if you're doing a straight bolt to the bar. Um, pay attention to that. Now, I like to do one, sit in the car, get it close, throw it on the ground like this, stretch them the same, and then finish them out. So then I like to loop these back through the buckle again like this, and then I'm gonna roll this up and then put a zip tie through it down here so there'll be two kind of rolls. We'll slide those through the seat, bolt that into the bar, and then the lap belts are gonna be easy in the submarine strap because he's got these nice adapter roonies. That is the factory position for the old seat belt. So with all that's nice and safe and it's in a really good position actually still with the seat. So that's good. So is that one up there. Woo, we're uptown. I did order some, well, I sorted by price cheapest first. And <laughs> there we go. It did come with some bootings here. And I guess we gotta jam these in or something for this to click to. It comes with like six, we'll probably do two, you know? Just gotta do this strap, lap belts, pop a couple screws in, done. This should make a nice sweaty back in the summer. Yeah. Seat, seat cover, belts, done. Now let's get this thing banging and all eight in here. The lightning hoses is leaking lightning, specifically this one right here. And you can see it's been lightly modified to try to prevent that from happening in the past. Didn't work. So let me, I think we'll just go ahead and make one up. I might make a few up and get this replaced with a new boot thingy-mabob as well. We know we got fresh oil on this, filtrate. All the juices are topped off. I am going to have to drain this and just fill it up with water before we get to the track. I got to change some tires and wheels, but we're getting there. We might make it yet today. I just got done pulling this out. Look at this thing. Yeah, it's no wonder she was leaking lightning. We're going to have to go through and check all of these at this point. Actually, I think that was the only one that had an elbow. Actually, that guy. It's already been replaced, but this, I replaced it on the road trip home, if you remember. But let's check it again. The rest are probably okay. Went down to the parts store and picked up an Akasals. I don't know. Whatever. It had 90 degree boots in it. Most kits these days will come with two bags. One is going to be for a points and or performance coil type application and one bag is going to be HEI. Whichever one you don't use, throw them up on the shelf. We've never went over this before so I'm going to kind of show you quick how to make up wires if you haven't done it before. It looks and sounds super intimidating but it's actually extremely easy. All you need obviously is your wires. You need a tool. This is for making plug wires but you don't have to have this. A pocket knife and some kits like the MSDs will have a little clamp in here that you could put in a vise to crimp these. You just need this part right here. I'm going to put the plug boot protectors on. Need a little bit of silicone or some sort of lubricant and that's really it guys. You're going to measure your old one, cut the new one to length or if you want to do something you know a little more trick you can get extra length out of them. For example some older engines like 283s, 307s, the plug wires go around the bottom of the engine and then back up and around. This is a mess because of the way that it is. We're going to kind of just copy what we got right now for now. And uh, I don't know. Someday we change the headers, we can change it up. I'm just trying to get it 
on the track. Oh, we need fitting, a boot, shirt, boot protector, tool, new lightning hose. We go a little bit longer. Right about there. Cut this. It's cut now, you know. Then I'm gonna slide my boot protector on. That's for the boot protection. A little bit of juice down here. Slide this in. Everybody does this a little bit differently, but in the end, I think everybody ends up with the same result. You got a lightning hose. Sure. Now I recut just the very end where I was just marring it up with my plier. Get your center electrode out like that. I like to pinch my fitting just a little bit because they always come a little bag, you know. Fold this back over, slide your fitting on, get your tool in here. Something like that. Squeeze it together. Don't go too crazy with the squeezins. You can actually do the opposite and hurt yourself. Slide your fitting back over. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, a little bit more. Boom. One custom length lightning hose. We can go pop this in. We'll go check a couple more and make sure they're good. It's going to look goofy. I just don't know if I have the time to sit here and go through all these. Maybe I do. I don't know. Well, before I put this back in, I got to thinking, this has already been clearanced, but probably not enough. And I watched an episode of Engine Masters, you guys probably saw this too, where they beat on a set of headers like you wouldn't believe. And it changed the horsepower, none, zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the Tanya Harden 300 here and massage this a little bit more. To where we get some more clearance out of this thing because obviously this is an issue that continually happens let's try to prevent it till we can get a few passes in the day hopefully easy Ooh, easier more easy i think that's where i need it right there Doesn't seem to be, you know, giving me the divot where I want it. Right there, I said. Right there. Right here. Right over here. Right there. Right here. There it was. I think I finessed that in. Well, I can definitely tell I gained a little bit of clearance down there because I was able to get my socket in there which I was never able to do before. So maybe that'll be just enough to keep from burning that puppy out every 38 seconds. I left the master on and uh, well, dead battery. That's weird. We put new exhaust on this. Uh, volunteer muffler and performance came down. We did three inch pipes with Flowmaster FX. It sounds way better than last time you guys heard it. I'm gonna clean out all this junk. I forgot about this anyway. And uh, I guess we'll also, throw a different battery in here. Get this one on. Boost mode, let it boil for a couple months. You know, that'll bring it around. Well, it turns out that's the only 34 PRMs I got. The other ones are too tall or the posts are on the wrong side and the hoses in the back don't fit. So we're gonna boil this one. While that's going on, we're gonna change out the front tires here. The other one keeps going flat. And I don't want to remount it and do all that stuff. Plus, I have another set of Belay's specialties that match that. So we'll put those on the front. I know they're good. They're also going to be significantly lighter than this combination here. Those wheels are light, 
but these sportsman's tires are actual uh, DOT street tires, so they're pretty hefty compared to the other drag tires I have. So let's jack this front up, swap these tires out. I even got some new lug nuts and stuff for it over here. Because we had planned on trying to take this on sick week, so I got parts stuff that was for this, but we just never got around to it because honestly, this needs resealed. It leaks oil and does some other stuff. I'm hoping we could just sneak it down to eighth and uh, not have any drip issues or drop anything on the track. Here's those fronts. They haven't been run since sick week last year and they are dirty. So I'm gonna clean them up here a little bit. Throw them on. I also uh, went ahead and rebuilt front drums while I had it off. And what I mean by that is just Sure, brand new. Whoa, that completely changed the look of the car. See if we can fire this thing. They've been banging on all eight. Battery's still there. Oh boy. All right, let's try this again. Fuel pressure, ignition. Well, we got the ice cube juice swapped for water. When I check the shift machine juice, that is about a quart low. We're gonna top that off really quick. And we got the ramp truck up here. We're gonna get this thing loaded, get to the track. Hopefully we can get a couple runs in before they close tonight. It's running much better. No semi and toter home for us. Got the wedge loaded up. Going old school. Funny thing is, this truck, remember all the stickers that, and decals that were on the glass and stuff? This is what this truck did every weekend, was haul a drag car to the track, so it's very familiar with this. Topping off with fuel, we got a cooler in here, got a nice set of tools, some rags, some juices and stuff like that. We'll get under the car and wipe all the water and drips and stuff off when we get to the track. Hopefully tech's still open, I didn't even look at that. It's gonna be something else if that's closed, whoops. Chevelle is looking good. Needs a wash, I'm not used to having shiny paint that's for sure but it's all dirty yet from coming home this was the first fuel stop off the interstate i guess we take some back roads and wind our way over to etheridge is where we're going it's a good jaunt for us but the old chevy it'll get us there well guy might as well do some antique shopping you know and then more antique shopping Gotta pick up some jam and jelly and some pickles, whatnot. Maybe a buggy. I don't know. This is one of the coolest stores I've been in. Look at all these cans. None of this stuff's for sale. It's just what's the word, Jessica? Decora? Yeah, it's just a decor. Yeah. Look at this. It's really neat. Yeah, that old belt, old gates. I got some candied jalapenos and some hot and spicy salsa so far. Look at the old wax shoelaces. Corn and bunion pads, 15 cents. Look at the little baby shoes. Really neat place. They got a bunch of old school candies here. Like stepping into the old days. We got a thing to travel all. That's some good jacks down there. 
We're on the hunt for some antique coolers and some other things. This place looks like it might be right up our alley. Got some good tires out here. Destinations. Oh, we do need a hose. Check that out, Jessica. Hey. That's. Check. Ooh, we got some good T-posts. Three of them. You know, we're always reinvesting in the channel. You guys know that. And we also do that with the equipment we use. And look what I found here. About to get you guys some potato vision. You know, we got the Kodak and the Ansco. And this guy here, I think we might get like 180 out of it, which is kind of baked potato-ish, but it's got a flash. So this is pretty neat. Look at this, they already had accessory shoe mounts on here. Actually, being quite honest, all three of these are really neat. I like this old camera gear, I collected a little bit. We're gonna shoot next door, see if we can pick up some accoutrements for the house. Got a world of a deal on these in bulk. That one's not in good shape. That one's recently stolen. Uh, this one, not bad, pretty good. Throw those in the trunk for now and I'll put them up some other day. Yeah, I got a key to this, believe it or not. We made it. Just saw an old Ford pole in front of us. Etheridge Motorsports Park. Never been here, but apparently this is the spot to be if you're in central Tennessee. That also rhymed, didn't it? Sure. It's only uh, 20 bucks a race car. Look at this old truck up here. Well, there's lots of room. We were a little bit nervous because I think it's a season opener. Oh, there's quite a bit of folks here, actually. Back to the trees. I've seen some rail cars, some real fast looking pick em up trucks. Lots of trucks, actually. I don't know where I'm going. I'm just kind of. <laughs> Taking a lap? Yeah. Ooh, look at this homemade trailer. That's a lot of little S10s. That's what I'm saying. Like the small mini truck scenes here. I don't know, I guess we're gonna go right here, right up by the staging lands. Look at that Nova. Nova sandals. Nice looking rigs out here. Super clean third gen. Handful of bikes. Look at this wagon. Oh my goodness gracious. Got a little bit of everything. Pontiac power. Nice little track. Looks nice and clean. I think they run every weekend out here, but anywho, we're gonna go turn our tech card in, see what the program is. trying to get the lay of the land you know scooting around a little bit checking things out sportsman tree eighth mile grassroots drag racing right here anything versus anything they just say open lane bring them in got a mixture of everything some of you are probably wondering what are you why are you, why are you here, what are you doing why are you here right now well if you've watched the channel for a while, one of my favorite things about old cars is their history. How they became what they are today. And the path in which they got to where they are today. And learning about all of that. Not only the owners, but why it is the way it is. Here in a little bit, we'll talk about, I actually got to speak to the owner of the car, the Chevelle. 
we'll talk about all that. I got a bunch of history on it, but like I told him, I just want to run this thing like how you ran it and learn about it, see what it can do, feel it, drive it, and just pay homage to all the time and effort and money that he put into it before we blow the thing apart. So that's what we're doing. It may fall on its face. Who knows what's going to happen? But we're, nonetheless, we're going to give it a try and have a lot of fun doing it. Tell you what, square body plus A body is the right body. She ain't going to be the fastest one out here today, but man alive, does it look good. Family's having fun already, I see. That's good. Absolutely blessed to be out here playing race car. And I want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart and my families for helping make this possible. And we just appreciate each and every one of you. Let's get Liberty unloaded, check everything off, make sure nothing's changed in the last couple hours, warm her up. We'll see if we go get in the lanes and make the first pass since 1988. First time at the track. What's this thing gonna do? Well, he said it ran mid 12s consistently back in the day. We're talking mid 80s, guys, late 80s. Some of you were even born then, come to think of it. Any hoofs. Eighth mile track. Track looks to be pretty gripped up ish. There's no one blowing the tires off. Um, I think from what the old owner said, this was. 60 foot king back in the day so if we get a good 60 foot i'm hoping for like an 8.3 to 8.6 eighth mile which would be like a low 13 ish quarter mile which i think is very respectable for a car that used to run mid 12s that sat forever again this 35 years this car hasn't seen the track and it sat for two decades off the road more than that so yes that would be splendid. It'd be fun though to see if it's quicker than Vanishing Paint, which has a fresh, you know, rebuilt engine, 360 in that, and quite a bit of goodies. See if this old timer can hang in there. Gonna fire it up again. Um, I fixed the rad, went ahead and TIG welded that super quick. And by that I meant I smeared someone's 48 year old RTV over it, and then wrapped that with some cheap truck stop duct tape you know so I'm gonna fire it up roll into the staging lanes shut it off so it doesn't build any pressure and then by the time I get through the burnout that's when it'll be building pressure hopefully I'm at the tree and we can cut her loose before they give me the shut her down you know we'll see what happens
pass, especially fumbling with the shifter. It's not like a traditional ratchet shifter, so I was trying to, you know. But 178, 60 foot, 527-330, 822-8, which is already like a 1280 quarter right out of the box. We haven't done nothing. We haven't adjusted timing, air pressure. Did I spin off the line? It felt like it a little bit. I don't know, honestly. It felt like it a little bit. We're gonna let her cool down though, she's hot. <laughs> and then uh, we'll let the track stick it up a little bit. We'll go hit her again, see what happens. We wanna run her two, three times a day just to try to get an average, so we'll see what happens. But I'm still a little warm. It's about 180, 190, but it's been sitting quite a while. We went and supported the track a little bit, dipped her toe into some lemonade, and kids got some ice cream and stuff. I tried the chili. I think this is as cool as it's going to get without fans, and you know, we didn't bring nothing, so let's go hit her again. I want to get, probably if we can, three solid passes down so we can average this up and just kind of see where we're at. So far, our car's going good. Just got to get used to the shifter. It's really sloppy. It's not gated going forward. It would be a great shifter for a reverse pattern, but not, you know, the other way. So I shifted a little early. I didn't want to miss it. And you can also roll all the way in the third. So you got to kind of, oh, there it is. You know, well, let's try it again. Just got to get used to it. down on the track they're fixing that really quick and then we'll make our third pass here we're pretty hot but the track looks pretty good so I'm gonna see if we can improve the 60 foot this one two shift is really delicate and I got to pull it back into the gate and then third I got to really just give it Guys got her loaded up because when I hit the ticket shack, yeah, they called me for water. Not mad at all. Driver safety out here is the most important thing. So now we know we need a radiator in the Liberty Chevelle. We'll put it on the list. Probably should move to digital fans anyway. Here's the fantastic news. We just ran our new personal best in Liberty 8.10 in the eighth. Now there's a lot of calculators out there. They're probably gonna tell you different things. The most accurate one I could find that has you put in weight and everything, said that converts to a 12 
six or a 12 six and change 12 six four 12 six five the old timer said he ran a 12 38 was his best ever and that was with a 488 gear he was also a much smaller guy so we're doing good three you know what's point three not much driver mod air pressure timing certainly the 488 gear so the car is still running what it ran i'm going to say confidently decades later after being built in the 80s honestly it was a blast the family had a lot of fun we're going to haul back to the shop get this thing unloaded get it back into the shop i'm going to sit down with you guys and spend a few minutes and let's talk about the history of this car i have everything from when this rolled off the lot i think you guys are going to enjoy it i know i did well as you can see we made it home safely and successfully with the 71 chevelle now known as liberty put her to bed for now safe and secure by the way we get a round of applause for the ramp truck another journey with zero issues <laughs> still just me thanks for the four of you that clapped jeremy you i think you're cut off feller it's just <laughs> ease up for the night. Anyway, let's talk about the Chevelle here for a minute. What a successful day. So I had a conversation with, a lot of you have probably been waiting for this. I had a conversation with the previous owner, his name is Ed. What a super nice guy. Now he bought this exact car. Remember, I'm the second owner. He bought this car brand new as a senior in high school, right off the lot. He can't remember exactly how much but he thinks it was right around $3,000. It is not a heavy Chevy. That's one of the first things I asked him because the value of the car would, you know, it'd be through the roof, to be honest. And he said, nope, it was just a base, plain Jane, blue Malibu. So it was originally blue. It was painted, however. It was painted in 1999, so 24 years ago. I believe, according to math. And look how beautiful it still is. One of the reasons he thinks, and I somewhat agree, is it was like the last year that you could use lead-based paint, some of the old school paint. It's thick, it's hard, it withstands everything better than most, it doesn't chip easy, and hence the beautiful Chevelle here. It still looks really, really good. Now he did tell me that he started off with a 307, started hopping that up, kind of got bored with it, moved on to a 350, started really getting into racing and things like that, and then came ripping the interior out and doing some other things and trying to make it faster. And he eventually ended up with this 400 over here. And it is a 406, so it is bored. It does have flat top pistons. It's got standard camel hump heads that have been, you know, 49 angle valve job and all of this and that, but they're standard double hump heads. It does have what's called a crane commander cam in it, which back in the day, that was the cam. Remember, this was built in the mid 80s, so choices of performance was not like today where you could just get on the interwebs and get whatever you want. And then all of the other parts and go fast goodies on here. Another question I asked him was, did you really just pull it to the track with a hitch and then race it? And he said, yes, absolutely did. There should be some missing hardware and some marks on the bumper, which I was able to confirm on both sides. And that's from a tongue hitch that he pulled this thing to the track with. He just couldn't get a trailer. You know, that's just the way it was. Guy wanted the race, so I thought that was really cool as well. He mentioned to me that he mostly ran 411s, which is what the car has in it right now. And I'll get back to that in a second. He did run 488s for a short period of time. And that's when he ran his best ever time, a quarter mile at a 12.38 on this. Back in the day, he said this was a 60 foot monster. That was his words. He said, I'd beat 10 second cars out of the 60 foot and then they'd have to chase me down the track. And we ran like a, what was it? One six, one seven, 60 foot today. Really respectable. When you look at turbo cars and things like that, running a one, two, you know, one teen, maybe, some in the 130, whatever. That's huge, if you think about it. I'm brake standing this thing running that time, and so was he. So that's really cool. 
It currently has a 411 in it. So when you think about running an 810 and the 8 today with a 411 gear, you know, decades later, the car is healthy. And when I do the math, theoretical math, work this backwards, call it a 3,300 pound car, just from experience running eighth mile, which is what I used to do when I was a kiddo, you know, knee high a grasshopper, whatnot. This is 315 to 325 horse all day long to the wheel, which gets us really close to that horsepower per cubic inch on an engine dyno. And I've done that many times. You guys have watched me with basic stock GM stuff and a cam, like that 307 we built and so on and so forth. So it's a really nice car overall. He did put quarters on it once when he had it painted, but he said otherwise it's never seen rain. It's never seen snow. It's never been stored outdoors. He's waxed it more times than he can count. It's just been babied its entire life. And clearly we can see that. And we're gonna continue to do that. You guys are gonna see this car on the channel quite a bit. It's obviously our nice car in the stable. We're nervous around this thing. I don't know how to, you know, how do you work on it without scratching it? Is what we're still trying to figure out. We've got big plans for this, at least our idea of big plans. Would still love to hear yours. Bleep bloop it down below in the comments section. What's next for this car? We've proved it was an 80s street machine. It was absolutely viable. It still runs great today. But what's the next phase? We gotta have Liberty 2.0, I'll call it. So I'm looking forward to seeing your guys' comments. Thanks for watching as always. Appreciate it very much. We'll see you very soon.